Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habtu fillah a misconception about tawhid which is a very common misconception from some of the people and even from some duaat from people some callers uh, to Islam and that is the concept that you can move on from tawhid or you know it's enough people know enough tawhid let's move on to these other things these social ills and so forth but if we look at the, the minhaj of the Salaf, and if we look, more importantly, we start at the beginning, we look to the Qur'an, we look to the Sunnah, we see that Tawheed was never left. And as evidence for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping. What's your purpose? Is it to deal with social ills? Is it to, uh, you know, win people in debates and stuff? No. I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Our purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Tawheed. That's Tawheed al-Ibadah. That's the Tawheed of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, which And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things and Th those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning it could be idols, it could be uh, any kind of false deity, and it could even be those who are beloved, but in anything that is uh, belie uh, that they accept being worshipped, then this is definitely Tagut. And that lets us know that what? That this was the menhaj, the methodology, and it was the purpose of the the NBA. They were sent with this message to call their people to Tawheed and avoid shirk. And there's so many ayat, Qur'aniya. But what uh, uh, arose as an issue, I did a video about Tawheed, simple video that, you know, that we should continue with Tawheed. Tawheed is, and I've said this countless times, it's implicit in all acts of worship. It is implicit and explicit. It's both. The, and a person responded, but move on from Tawheed if people know it as this hadith is proof. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful uh, way of articulating something that is absolutely not true. And the reason I want to show that this, uh, th I felt the need to even do a video about this, because here a person has used a, a, a hadith about Tawheed to say, to use that as an evidence to move on from Tawheed. And we say, Men sabaka Who preceded you in this new understanding? And that's why, Habatifillah, it's so important to atlab al-ilm. It's very important to seek knowledge. Why? Because, it's, because when we seek the path of knowledge, and the path, it's a path, it's a minhaj, it's a methodology. It's a way of understanding. It's not just picking up these texts, even if you know a little bit of Arabic or you know a lot of Arabic, and then you're going to start making ahkam and judgments. And No, that's not what Islam calls us to do. Not everyone can just make ijtihad themselves. And they can't make ijtihad kharijin, leaving off what has already been codified by the Salaf al-Saleh and all the ulama of Islam. So we can't go against that. We can't go against that and say, you know, this, tips, this ayat, I think I'm going to give it a new tafsir. So... This is called istinbat, istinbat. This means, this is the way in which you understand text and you derive a hukum. So we can say istinbat, such and such ahkam min hadha nas, from this text. From this text, this has been derived from that. So you and I might look at a text and say, hey, you know what? That sounds like it means this. Oh, it sounds like communism is in accordance with Islam. Because when I was a new Muslim, we used to think like this. I used to, I didn't have anybody to teach me. I was new. I just read the Quran. I was brand new Shahada. I used to think every kind of social system that I felt was good. Whoa, there's an ayat there that's translated for me. Hmm. Communism must be okay because Islam is a social system and it's talking about brotherhood. And it's talking about, you know, the importance of equality and this and that and the other. All of this is istanbat batil. Let's look at what our brother wrote. May Allah bless us in him and forgive us in him and guide us in him. I mean, he mentioned the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, who sent, well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Yemen. He said, and he said, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي كُمْ مِنْ أَحْلَ الْكِتَابِ فَلْيُكُونَ أَوْلَ مَا 
ما تقول شهرة إن لا إله إلا الله وكما قال so he said verily he said معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه uh, to Yemen and Yemen at that time was Ahl Kitab meaning Christians and Jews and he said the first thing I want you to call them to is the Shahada Shahada in La ilaha illallah okay the first thing I want and so he brings the Nas here uh, but it's very small وَأَنِّي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ هُمْ أَطَاعُوا لِذَلِكْ فَأَعْلَمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ إِفْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتِ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمْ وَلَيْلٍ so, in, so if they accept that, meaning they accept that tawheed, that, that the shahadatain, then, and they obey you in that, then to notify them that Allah has made the five daily prayers upon them. فَإِنْهُمَ طَاعُوكَ بِذَلِكَ And if they, you know, they uh, obey you in that, then, you know, and those are the arkan of Islam, arkan of Islam, right? the pillars of Islam, إِلَىٰ آخِرَ hadith Until the end of the hadith. The shahid, this brother, may Allah bless us in him, use this to say, but move on from tawheed if people know, and it is, and as this hadith is proof, that's not proof, my brother. Why? Now let's get to the crux. The reason why Habitifillah is because Tawheed can never be left. We have no evidence to show. The Prophet Wasallam focused on building the Iman of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala in the Meccan period, building their Iman and, and Tawheed. And he continued with Tawheed when other things like Jihad, the Salat was legislated, Jihad, fasting, all of these things. What are all of those things? What do we call them in Islam? We call them Ibadah. We call them worship. Worship can only be accepted with what? What are the two conditions of uh, shartan? Fil amal, fi kabul al amal. The two conditions for having our deeds accepted. First is ikhlas lillah. Ikhlas lillah is what? That's it. Tawheed. That's tawheed. And the second is mutaba. That is following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Every single act of worship must have those conditions. If it's considered an act of worship, in order to be authentic in Islam, first, and in order to be accepted by Allah, it must meet those conditions. So when we talk about the Salat, if a person is learning the Salat, and they're praying to Lat wal Uzza, is it accepted? Absolutely not. It's called, it goes from Tawheed to being Shirk. It goes from an act of worship to an, uh, an illegitimate act of, illegitimate, uh, act of worship. Okay, it has it lost its authenticity because it lacked one of those conditions, which was tawheed, ikhlas lillah. Likewise, fasting, the same. Likewise, hajj. All of these pillars, we do them to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he commanded us. They're from the awamrillah. They're from the commandments of Allah. You're obeying Allah. And that's tawheed al-ibadah. That is tawheed. Al ibadah that is tawheed of worship. So it is a false concept. We don't know where this came from. This is kind of a new concept, and I've even heard some du'at sort of allude to this, saying, you know, you know, we the tawheed, yeah, but it's time to go beyond. Oh, just no tawheed, and your ballad's gonna no. That's a that is a false statement from someone who studied tawheed as as grounded as some of these brothers that I've heard say these kind of statements. I, I'm disappointed because. It's almost as if they didn't understand Tawheed because one of the things we learned from the ulama which is in accordance with the book in the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is that when a person's Tawheed is sufficient is deficient, sorry that, that, that is also a part that's a reflection you know, their sins when they have sins that is a reflection of naqs in their Tawheed Tawheed is not just some concepts, abstract, oh, you need to know these three concepts. Now, if that's what you mean, that it's just uh, um, uh, intellectual constructs, you know, it's just a part of these, this categorization and it's some sort of uh, impractical, uh, impractical concepts, then okay, but no, Tawheed is practical. Tawheed is everything in Islam. It's everything. It's the ghaya, it's the reason you're, you, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every act you're talking about has to be built on tawheed. So, going back, if we have a social ill in our community, say if we have a brother, he's committing zina all the time, 
Okay? And mashallah, he knows the three categories of Tawheed. Okay, and he's mashallah, and he's this, and he's looks like he's practicing the sunnah and he's, his garments look lovely his beard looks lovely and all these other things okay but he's regularly committing zina do we say his tawhid is is his understanding of tawhid is perfect no why because that tawhid and that iman have a very strong alaqa a very strong relationship so that shows a deficiency in his tawhid why because tawhid If he is worshiping Allah, as is evidence in the hadith of Jibreel about having ihsan, what did the Prophet ﷺ say? And ta'budullah ka'annaka tarah fa in lam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak. It is to worship Allah as if you see him, but because you can't see him, know that he sees you. That's tawheed. That's tawheed. And so the point we're making that a person who is committing zina like this, that means there's a nux, there's deficiency in his tawheed, there's deficiency in his iman. Why? Because the one who is really understands tawheed, they know Allah is sami and basir. He hears and sees everything. They know that Allah subhanahu inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shayin fil ardi wa la fi sama. They know this. They know that nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth, in the heavens or earth. That's tawheed. So Tawheed never goes away from Ibadah. So this is why I made this video to, 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 to correct this. Because that's one, one issue. The second issue is when you say, but move on from Tawheed if people know it. How do we know people know it? People constantly need it. I, you can't hardly tell me a Muslim country that doesn't have major shirk in Ibadah, that grave worship, everything. I don't care. Indonesia? Misr? <laughs> Yemen? What? Tell me, just please name someplace. Mauritania? It doesn't matter. Many African countries. Uh, where? Where? The Gulf countries, they have their own issues. Where? Where is there not being mistakes made in Tawheed? And the correction of Tawheed is constant. Because Tawheed is everything. Everything mabni ala hadha. Everything is built upon Tawheed. So this is why we have to be very cautious. When we say Tawheed, we don't just mean memorizing some categories and some ayat and some hadith. But Tawheed is practical. That's what we're talking about. We have to practice our Islam. It's not just theoretical. And so that's why we can never divorce Tawheed from that. And that's why that's a khatha, that ibarah. That's a khatha. And it's a khatha. The statement's a mistake. Secondly, it's a double mistake. Why? Because men sabaka they had the call. Who made istinbat? Who made dalil? You tried to make an evidence from a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for a false concept. Tawheed is never removed. We don't move on from Tawheed. Yes, we need fiqh. Yes, we all that fiqh and everything is about Tawheed. It's how to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala. So there's no moving away. All the Islamic sciences they're built upon Tawheed. I don't care if it's qaid fiqhia. I don't care if it's usul of fiqh. I don't care if it's usul of tafsir. Any of those sciences, they are still built upon tawheed. They are, they are there. Some of those sciences in and of themselves have value, and some of them have value because they're helping you to practice tawheed. And this is what you'll find. If you look in the muqaddimah of many of the books of the various sciences, you'll see knowledge, matloob uh, li-dhatihi, wa knowledge matloob li there's knowledge which is uh, that you need in and of itself. And that would be, uh, you know, aqidah, creed. And then there's knowledge which is a means to help you practice that aqidah. Okay? And then there's knowledge that encompasses all of it. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.